Miss Sergio Rivera, this is my first podcast that I'm using with the magic of the internet. Um, I want to talk about special education because I've been in the field for five years and I've taught in the elementary, middle school, and high school uh, levels. So I feel like I have a lot to share about that and I want to kind of share that with parents and other educators and just practice my own skills of speaking. So with that being said, I would like to talk about my positionality, uh, which I think is super important. And that's like the main thing I want to talk about um, today. So for the most part, um, this term positionality is something that I've come across for the last couple of years. Um, I'm 30. Uh I have a bachelor's in English, I have a master's in special education, so I'm kind of like, I read a lot, and I read for leisure, I read for fun, so I come across a lot of different words, um, but I'm always trying to look for new stuff um, that kind of explains the way that we explain things. Um, that's something that's super interesting to me as an educator, because I often teach people that don't know, don't have any relation to anything, um, then we have to build that up uh, within our students. So um, I think for me, uh, positionality is actually really important. And what that really is, is um, how we stand in relation to the, the dynamics of power and privilege, like as a person. So whatever I say is informed by who I am. And uh, our students, they they can tell pretty quickly and or they just make up their own judgments um, of who we are. But uh, in terms of this podcast, you might be judging me by my voice, the way that I pronounce things, the words I use. Um, but I kind of just want to lay things out in the clear uh, before I start so you know who's talking to you uh, during this whole journey. <laughs> um, so my identity is, uh, I don't really identify with like race as much, uh, but my parents are definitely Central American. Um, so I guess that would make, consider me Latino or, or Latinx or Hispanic. I don't really understand, uh, too much the dynamics of that. Definitely indigenous, um, Definitely a mixture of like European and African as well. So I'm, a, I'm the sum of that. Um, my class, who, well, my parents were both first generation uh, immigrants. So that definitely informs my upbringing in Los Angeles. Um, we grew up in uh, Pico Union area, mid city. So everyone around us was in the same situation. Um, so I have that view. So when people wanted, were trying to warn me about being a teacher, I was like, well, I know exactly how it is. The worst case scenario, because I was a student in the district school. Um, in terms of religion, I think this one kind of stands out for me. A lot of people, I've heard people kind of assume that I'm either Catholic because of my race. Um, but I am Baha'i, which is a, new religion in the world comparatively to the uh, other well-known religions. Um, but Baha'is believe that all religions are from the same creator and that our purpose in life is to create unity and to work towards peace. So that definitely informs me as an individual and in the work that I do. Um, and in terms of gender, I definitely consider myself male, um, but I don't like to be constricted in those roles. Obviously, I'm a teacher, which is a field that is dominated by women, usually historically. Um, so I like to be in touch with those feelings. My sexuality, <laughs> I am 
attracted to women, if that's important to everyone. I am also married to a white presenting Latina woman as well. Uh, nationality, I was born in the United States, so I had all the privileges of being able to uh, receive money from the state for school and all that good stuff that comes along with that, which I understand allowed me to get to this point of my life where I can have a bank account um, and do things of that nature. And I am able-bodied. Uh, that's my ability. So I have full range uh, of things that are considered to be normal, but not a lot of people can do. Uh, for like two years of my life, I lost sight in one of my eyes to a freak accident. Or uh, my body was like, your retina will be detached now and started attacking it. And I had to get several corrective surgeries because they did not understand why that was happening or why my body would do that, but it did. Um, so... I definitely have that perspective of not being able to see and having something happen to me that I have no idea what is happening and what I can do about it. Um, and I actually wish that I would have known a little bit more about special education during my community college days, because that's when I that happened to me. And uh, I actually went to the office of students with disabilities and was kind of denied uh, any services because the clerk, which was also a student, uh, she had no idea what she was doing. And if I was her boss, I would be very upset. But she was like very rude uh, with me and she wanted to know if I had an IEP. And I was like, what's that? I've never heard about that. Um, and she was like, well, you, you can't receive any of these services if you don't have an IEP. And I was like, well, okay, but what is that? Um, <laughs> and then she, uh, I think she thought I was rude at that moment. But um, I was like, I have no idea what that is. Uh, like, I can't see out of my eye. Like, I need support. And she's like, mm, yeah, but you need an IEP. So if you don't have one, you need to come back and get one. So that's completely not useful at all so um i kind of gave up there because i was like overwhelmed with my current physical situation and uh just the mental stress of having to try to explain that to someone that really didn't care and have no idea how to access any supports um so i didn't actually receive any of those supports uh during community college which also made it very difficult but I made it through and I'm here now. And maybe I'll talk about that at some other point. Um, but yeah, that's my positionality. And I wanted to share that with you guys. And I'll speak about my educational journey next. So uh, my first kind of, I want to talk about my uh, journey through school because I think it informs why I want to be a teacher uh, based on my experiences and based on some of my beliefs that I'll touch upon. Um, so <laughs> I had a hard time adapting to school as a kid. I remember like kindergarten and pre-K, I did not know, that, I did not understand the rules of engagement. Um, I did not like, I did not enjoy being around other children. For the most part, I was like, why are we here? I'd rather be at home. Uh, <laughs> uh, not that there was a lot going on there either. I was just, well, I guess my sister and cousins were at home. So that was interesting and fun. But uh, for elementary, uh, you know, I, I was actually pretty on the top of things. Things came naturally. I had some good teachers. Um, we did a lot of fun activities, everything was really structured, still a child. <laughs> um, I think when I got into middle school, you know, puberty happens and um, our minds kind of grow in capacity during that time. So 
I was now more distracted with different thoughts, thinking about like political things. Um, I remember 9-11 happened during that time. So that was, uh, you know, I'm not sure. It affected all of us somehow and uh, definitely affected the school year uh, because our teachers were affected. But during that time, did not have good grades. I was like, uh, why would, why should I do any of this? That was my kind of thought. Um, I would just have to listen to the lectures and, or when the teacher was talking and then I would be able to like write it down, uh, during the test. Cause that was like the majority of the stuff that we did, uh, during class, I was definitely more interested to just talking to our, my classmates, uh, I think that was something that I was learning how to do in middle school, just speaking to other people. Um, and that was like super interesting to me. So I got bad grades during middle school. Uh, I remember my parents tried to put me into like a nicer high school to start off. The problem was that I had to commute on the bus like an hour to get there uh, on the regular MTA bus, what we used to call them back then. Um, so it was really easy to just like not go to school. So, and it also didn't really change anything for me or my experience there. Cause it was, it was not good either for me. Um, still really interested in just doing whatever I wanted to do. I didn't see the point of school or whatever. And then like an interesting bit about high school for me was that I realized I couldn't do any homework, like, that was not my concern. I would instantly forget about the homework as soon as the class was over or whatever. Um, I did know that I needed to pass the classes to get a diploma. So I was concerned with that. I did want a high school diploma, but I wanted to do the least amount of work possible to get it. Um, and I was like really banking on my own skills during college and I didn't know what I want to, wanted to do I had a feeling that I wanted to go into marketing or something like that um, but I did I wasn't really sure I didn't really know anyone that had gone to school or anything of that nature that could give me any advice so um I mean, there was some people that were like guiding me through that, but my skills compared to my grades, my skills were like way higher than what my grades reflected at that time. And I even spoke to my counselor to change my classes. So I would have to do the minimum amount of, of coursework to receive a California high school diploma because I was so sure that I could just pick up advanced math and writing skills the first time I saw them in community college. And let me tell you, that was a mistake because when I got to school, community college, it was like a review for everyone else. And I was trying to learn it for the first time. And I don't think that's something that I understood while until I was there and I was like, Oh, I made a mistake. Like these people are just reviewing this stuff and I'm trying to learn it for the first time. So that was basically my whole experience in community college, just learning things for the first time while everyone else was reviewing it. And the courses are created, uh, with certain assumptions that you already understand the material for the most part or have a base set of skills, uh, which I did not have like studying and, uh, managing your time to review chapters on your own and uh, completing homework. So those were things I did not develop during my K through 12 years, um, which, you know, as a special education teacher, <laughs> I definitely, or a teacher in general, I would have definitely recommended me for services during that time, because that's one of the things that we try to look out for is for students that ability is way higher uh, than what their grades are reflecting. So I definitely needed somebody to kind of um, 
build a relationship with me and kind of steer me to where I should be. Cause I was steering myself at that point. Um, and I, uh, as a, <laughs> as a child, you don't really know what's going on. So, uh, someone older can really, really steer you into the right direction. Um, especially when it comes to education, cause my parents, uh, a lot of like first generation Latino parents are just like, oh, just do your work. Haz tu trabajo, like, haz lo más, like, just try harder, like, uh, ponle más ganas, like, just try harder, basically. Um, but like, when you need it broken down for you, they have no actual practical solutions or creating spaces for students to actually do their work or minimizing distractions is not a it's it's a luxury really um and a lot of families don't even understand that that's something that they should strive for for their students if they want them to be successful um so that's something i learned from experience you know <sighs> so uh when i got to community college i was like oh, i made a mistake like I don't want to be here. Like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Uh, luckily, I had a lot of friends that helped me out. And at that point, I had made um, some older friends that had gone to college through the Baha'i community. And some of them really encouraged me to kind of stick with it because I could do it. They are like, you're smart. You just got to do it. Um, so <laughs> uh, I had to just develop these skills of turning in work and stuff. And at that time, I feel like I did know I wanted to go into education just because I valued it so much. And that was definitely from some of the um, Baha'i writings that I had been reading and studying and I thought were uh, interesting or I really based like my whole educational like outlook on it. So I would like to share that with you at this moment. So the quote says, Regard man as a mine rich in gems of inestimable value. Education can alone cause it to reveal its treasures and enable mankind to benefit therefrom. So the idea in our current educational system is that the teacher knows everything and they are going to tell the student exactly how it is. Um, and that is how it's been up to this point in the United States um, for the most part. And a lot of teachers say like, oh, I don't believe in that, but they were taught in that manner. And it takes a lot of work to kind of like internal work for the teacher to kind of realize that that's not true and then changing their, their actions in their classroom to reflect that. Um, so to me, like regard man as a mind rich in gems, that means that everyone is rich in gems, like every single person. And the only way that we can reveal that is through education. Um, and mankind will benefit from them. <laughs> so, um, no matter that person's capacity in a given subject, like they can contribute to the well-being of mankind. So I take that very personally. Um, and that informs the way that I try to teach and talk to people. But uh, definitely grew up in a system or went through an educational system that did not have that at heart. Um, so I definitely have to decolonize my mind from those other thoughts and try to build up practices that um, reinforce um, helping people uncover these gems of inestimable value within themselves so they can contribute to their communities and to their families and to mankind as a whole. So um, I eventually figured it out through mutual support with other people, other students. I picked up uh, skills like creating study groups with my classmates. That really helped. <laughs> uh, 
because uh, they were able to keep me accountable. I learned that I needed people to keep me accountable consistently um, uh, because I still could not remember to turn in assignments or to get started on them on time. Um, I transferred to Cal State LA. Uh, and at that time, I was, thought I was going to be an English teacher. And uh, that was... I mean, I love English. I love reading. I love rap music because of being able to close read the the poetry of it. <laughs> I know a lot of people kind of dismiss that as like, ah, that's stupid. I'm like, mm, some of the best poetry is definitely rap at this point. Um, so that. <sighs> Oh, so actually, here's another thing. So when I graduated uh, for my English degree, I thought I was in an English teacher program, but it turns out that I still needed to go to school for another additional year to actually become a teacher, which was not my understanding up to that point. Um, so long story short, I had to, I was upset and I needed to find another way to get um, my credentials. And by that time I had been working with a lot of middle, middle school age students, like wide spectrum of them. And some of my favorite students were definitely students that needed additional supports. So they probably had IEPs, but I did, didn't really understand what that was at that point either. Um, so I actually ran into this program that was training teachers quickly in special education. So I joined that program and I got my master's through it. Um, I was able to start, uh, like volunteering basically in that field at a school while receiving a living stipend, stipend and, um, understanding how that worked and then the f while taking classes and then the following year I was able to like work full time so that is how I landed into being a special education teacher and I love it because I think we work with the best students um I've been in charge of like general education classrooms like something that they call advisory nowadays. Back in the day, we used to call it homeroom. Um, and also like subbing for teachers when they don't come, my coworkers. So e even within those settings, like my favorite students are still the special education students. Um, and because I feel like they just force you to be a better teacher. Like you have to make sure that everyone is being included and understanding and they force you to teach in a way that is more accessible to everyone. And it actually helps everyone at the same time. So that's, and it, I love it because you don't have to do the same thing every single time when you come into work um sometimes when i've been in charge of regular classrooms i felt like it's kind of uh boring when everyone just kind of does what you tell them to do that's been my experience um and i know it's more nuance nuanced than that but um definitely special education is the niche of education that i love and uh, including others and being inclusive is one of my favorite things to do.